Hello, everyone. It's uh, nice to be here again. Uh, today, I'm going to tell you uh, some research findings about security vulnerabilities in open source software. But first, briefly about me. Uh, I've been doing professional software development for nearly 15 years. I still am active developer, and I must say, I love it. Uh, I have also an extensive extensive research uh, background in uh, compiler designs, patterns, antimatterns, language semantics, and so on. Uh, I've been speaking at several conferences during the last five or, or four years. And most recently, I founded uh, Unita, which is a company focused on automated software engineering, how to help developers to write better software. Uh, we focus on some uh, automated refactoring and detection of uh, anti-patterns related to um, security performance and uh, databases, basically. So uh, I can say that uh, various security issues are my daily job, right? Uh, today, uh, I'm going to tell you about uh, some motivation and methodology behind uh, uh, this talk. Then we will move to security vulnerabilities, uh, statistics and examples found uh, mostly for application and web servers, as well as a uh, few web frameworks. Uh, in the end, I would like to uh, tell you about my vision about, and uh, my approach to security, how to assess security level of libraries we use, where, uh, what, uh, what to look for, and where to look at. Uh, first, disclaimer. I've been speaking about um, some anti-patterns for several years already, and uh, sometimes people perceived me as bashing something. It's not about bashing, so I, my aim here also is not bashing. It's about education, right? We want to write better software, so we uh, have to know what the problems are, right? So that's, uh, that's my uh, approach. I do like open source software, I think it's a great idea and, and great uh, uh, pieces of uh, libraries we can find out there. Uh, there are a lot of uh, libraries to choose from, then we can adjust them to our needs. That's a huge uh, advantage. And last but not least, it's all for free, right? And software is like sex. It's better when it's free. Uh, so, what's the problem? Do you know DevOps Borat on Twitter? Uh, he publishes some wisdoms, words of wisdom. And here we can find one of them. That hello world in cloud nowadays includes like one load balancer, two web servers, three web servers, and two database servers. That's so true. This is about complexity of software. It's not only about infrastructure. Think about your technology stack. How many libraries do you use? One, two, three, or tens or hundreds, right? It's more like tens or hundreds. A quick poll to you. Uh, how many libraries do you use? More than 10? Definitely, more than 100 might be, right? So this is a huge and still growing technology stack. So imagine a peaceful morning, like earlier this month in California, Java 1, fantastic weather, beautiful sun, sipping coffee, and uh, about to start programming. You are so safe, right, like the Titanic. What's, the un what's underneath? 
uh, underneath there is a huge number of various libraries. It's, there is a study that only for the average enterprise application, only 20% of code is our custom code, and the rest, it means 80%, uh, it's, uh, it's code written by someone else, like open source libraries, proprietary libraries, and so on. So we are not safe with such a huge number of uh, various developers behind. Uh, so the top of the iceberg, the tip of the iceberg, is our application. But underneath we have libraries, we have our application and web servers, we have databases, uh, operating systems, and uh, infrastructure. And we can uh, speak about security at all those levels. But today, I will focus only on two of them libraries and application and web servers. Uh, so uh, I will not tell you how to write secure software. I will only tell you which libraries or which application servers are more secure than others. Uh, so quickly about the sources and methodology behind the, the study. Uh, the main sources I've used uh, include the National Vulnerability Database. Uh, it's a database created by US CERT from the Department of Homeland Security's National Cybersecurity Division. Uh, and uh, this is a sponsor of the database. And the actual tool has been created by National Institute of Standards and Technology. This is a federal U.S. agency. Uh, then this was primary source of confirmed security vulnerabilities. Then there is another very um, prominent and um, broad uh, vulnerability database, the open source uh, vulnerability database. Uh, this database has been created, uh, the initiative uh, has been created during Black Hat Conference. So Black Hat is one of the most famous security conference in the world. Uh, so some notables uh, from the security environment mm, thought it might be very useful uh, to, to have such a um, common open source a uh, place of knowledge about security vulnerabilities. Uh, uh, afterwards, uh, the non-profit company has been created to support uh, uh, long-term um, viability of the database. It's uh, an open security foundation. Also, to find uh, some exploits, I've used the exploit database. Uh, so, uh, exploit is uh, an actual piece of code which uh, uh, uses um, specific vulnerability to uh, get access or um, to our system for to to get access, for example, or to 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 make harm in another way. Uh, important thing in uh, security and comparing security uh, is scoring system. So, and the National Institute of Standards and Technology introduced a common vulnerability scoring system, and this is a version two, uh, which uh, tries to objectively, to, which helps to objectively assess uh, the uh, severity of uh, security vulnerability. So, we have, uh, there is um, quite complex equation which uses uh, six variables provided by user, by human. Uh, and based on this, it produces a single base score. There are also uh, two other uh, scores, like temporal and environmental, but the basic and the most important is base score. And the variables used to compute it, uh, you see on the, on the slide. Uh, it includes... Um, uh, 
three of them refer to accessibility of vulnerability. It includes access vector, so uh, how and from which place we can exploit a vulnerability. So for example, a local uh, value for access vector means that we need uh, basically a physical access uh, or a local shell account to exploit vulnerability. Uh, access complexity uh, refers to how difficult it is to uh, craft an exploit. So if we need some specialized uh, some specialized uh, uh, things to, to make it happen, it's like very uh, high complexity. It's, if it's like uh, crafting a special URL, it's very simple, so it's low access complexity. Um, authentication refers uh, how many times uh, a hacker needs to authenticate in order to exploit a vulnerability. So if, we, it, if uh, he or she needs to um, uh, authenticate more than twice, it's multiple instances. If uh, once, it's single instance and, and none if uh, no authentication is required. So these three factors were about accessibility uh, of a vulnerability. And now uh, the next three are about uh, um, impact. Uh, how uh, vul exploiting vulnerability uh, harms our actual system. So uh, we have three factors, confidentiality impact, integrity impact, and availability impact. Confidentiality is about uh, disclosure of uh, uh, information, private, basically private information. So by private information, I mean information which requires uh, special privileges to read or get access to. Uh, integrity is about the uh, veracity uh, of, uh, for the system of uh, holding and storing correct data. So if uh, someone, um, if uh, a vulnerability allows to break integrity, it means that our data are in danger. And availability basically means about availability of a system to their uh, users. So if, we, if a vulnerability uh, makes possible to, for example, uh, over CPU in such a way that other users can't get access to the system, it means that uh, uh, availability impact is um, partial or, or uh, high, complete. So this is about scoring. Uh, what about uh, categorization? Uh, NIST uh, introduced common weakness enumeration hierarchy as well. So basically we can categorize uh, the vulnerability, not only in source code, but also in other areas as well. Uh, the National Vulnerability Database uh, does not support full uh, CWE scoring, uh, enumeration, but it provides a mapping for software issues and three additional types, uh, four additional types uh, that basically state that uh, vulnerability type is unknown uh, for those cases in which they don't have enough information to uh, assign a vulnerability to specific type. So now the real data. We will start with application and web servers. Uh, um, most recently, Zero Turnaround uh, conducted a poll in which uh, they've asked developers what one container they use in their daily work. So it turned out that uh, the vast majority of developers um, 
use uh, open source uh, containers like Tomcat or JBoss. Uh, it's somehow compliant with my vision and my experience. I don't know about you, uh, what kind of uh, web servers or app servers do you use? Who uses Tomcat? Most of them, yeah, me too. Who uses JBoss? Yeah. And uh, Jetty, another open source, Glassfish. Oh, only one. That uh, Glassfish is on the rising high, right? Uh, so, uh, what about uh, proprietary software and web logic and web sphere? Anyone here who uses it? Okay, so I will have some uh, interesting findings for you guys. Um, so we'll start right with the number of vulnerabilities for open source software uh, containers. Uh, I've chosen a Tomcat JBoss application server, I mean community edition. I also included JBoss enterprise application platform. Uh, it's open source, but uh, it requires some, uh, but it's commercial, not free. Uh, but uh, as uh, JBoss Enterprise Application Platform also uses JBoss uh, Community Server and some other open source software um, from JBoss, uh, it was interesting t uh, to, to compare it with other uh, uh, containers as well. So we have the winner here, right? Tomcat is a uh, shameful leader in this category, right? 100 total vulnerabilities found uh, in the NVD database. That's quite a lot comparing to others. Uh, I must admit that Tomcat, as far as I know, has the longest history. So it's quite obvious that it has like uh, the highest number of found uh, vulnerabilities, but still it's the order of magnitude higher, right? What about uh, proprietary software? It turns out they, they, they took over even Tomcat. They've got uh, uh, even uh, both of them uh, contains like uh, around 200 vulnerabilities, known vulnerabilities, uh, known and confirmed vulnerabilities. So that's quite high number. The question is why? Uh, we can't access software, we don't have access to it, right? But uh, what I can predict is that uh, Probably uh, security by obscurity concept does not work that well. And many eyes concept for open source software works much better, right? So we have many eyes that uh, review source code and they can find vulnerabilities earlier in the software lifecycle. That might be true. Another uh, thing is that uh, Closed software, commercial software, is much more complex, right? They provide much more functionality than uh, um, simple uh, containers, open source containers. So additional complexity is the source of security vulnerabilities as well, in my opinion. So keep this in mind, please. Uh, when we compare open source software and closed software, it turns out that uh, for open source software and five platforms, uh, they have only 30, around 30% of the total vulnerabilities, while uh, proprietary software has twice as much. Uh, that's pretty impressive statistics for open source, it, sound, it seems that open source containers are much more secure, right? Uh, what about trends? Uh, does our software um, become more secure during the time? 
not likely because we see that uh, the, num the total number of uh, vulnerabilities found per piece of software is uh, on a growing uh, line, right? So every year, more or less, we find uh, more bugs, more and more bugs. Uh, when we take a look at uh, Tomcat, uh, we see that there are some peaks. Uh, yes? There is a question from the audience. Uh, I'm talking about all bugs in all applications versions. So I do not focus on a specific version. Those are statistics for a product, not a version. Yes. So for Tomcat, I mean it's Tomcat 3, 4, 5, 5.5, 5, 6, and 7. So what was, uh, I was about to say is that those peaks uh, with Tomcat uh, are probably connected to new uh, big releases. So one year we have a release and next year we have a peak in the number of security vulnerabilities found. So uh, it seems that it's uh, much more reasonable to use uh, um, more stable versions, right? That's our uh, popular perception as well. Uh, what about closed software? Uh, WebLogic and WebSphere are the leaders, right, in total number of vulnerabilities. But the trends are a bit different for both of them. Because for uh, WebLogic, uh, it seems that uh, there is uh, decreasing uh, uh, strongly decreasing uh, number of uh, security vulnerabilities found every year. So that's a very good news for WebLogic users. For WebSphere users, uh, it doesn't seem the case. WebSphere is a uh, total leader in the all categories. Uh, and take a look at WebLogic, because uh, WebLogic at uh, 2012 uh, was on a third position. So uh, in total, if I think it's quite a good uh, uh, result considering uh, how high they started a few years ago. Yes? Uh, found, confirmed. This includes... Uh, oh. Uh, by open, what do you mean? Okay. Oh, uh, I don't mean that those are fixed. Most of them are fixed, but uh, by uh, confirmed, I mean that uh, um, there is an uh, expertise that this is really a security vulnerability. That's why I use the data from NVD database, because those uh, are only confirmed database. And most of them are fixed, but not all of them. Uh, so uh, I can't say how many of them are not fixed, but uh, this is only like a few bugs uh, which are known, confirmed, and not fixed yet. Uh, about open bugs, usually you know, uh, usually uh, the um, procedure is that uh, First, the vendor is informed about security vulnerability, so uh, it gets a chance to fix it before it's a public release, right? So it's very difficult to get uh, statistics on uh, open vulnerabilities which are not fixed. Um, I don't. Uh, I don't. I didn't do such a comparison, but uh, on the average, for example, for Tomcat, it's like three months. Uh, I don't know whether or not it's a long time, because... Uh, I don't know. I don't have those data, so I can't say uh, whether or not it's better for closed software open source. Uh, 
Okay, here we see the uh, cumulated statistics of vulnerabilities by year for open source software. Uh, again, we see that uh, during the last uh, uh, five years, the trend is more or less stable. There are like uh, between 15 to 20 vulnerabilities found a year. And still, Tomcat is the leader. Uh, when we add uh, the commercial software like WebLogic or WebSphere, um, uh, we see uh, that uh, the number of uh, the average number, the total number of uh, vulnerabilities found per year is like around 40 or 50. And uh, the huge um, uh, portion of this uh, goes to WebSphere. Uh, what about the severity of those vulnerabilities? Um, so when we have when we have a look at uh, the total statistics uh, and uh, divide them by CVSS score, uh, it turns out as again popular uh, perception uh, that most of them are of medium uh, severity, so not uh, not that. Uh, dangerous to our systems. Uh, on the other hand, uh, when we take a look at WebLogic and WebSphere, we see that they have very, very high number of very, very critical uh, vulnerabilities. By critical, I mean that they may lead to a complete compromise of a system, a complete uh, confi confidentiality disclosure, um, complete destroy of your data or a complete uh, freeze of your system. Uh, when we take a look at open source software, they have like a few vulnerabilities while web logic of that uh, severity, while web logic and web sphere have like uh, 40 or 50. And uh, for web sphere, uh, 30 of them is like uh, a, on the highest scale, like na, uh, scored 9 or 10. What the fuck score? Um, what about confidentiality impact? It turns out that uh, most open source uh, containers uh, will not disclose our data, will not allow to disclose our data. They are pretty safe. Uh, on the other hand, WebLogic and Twesby has have quite high number, like 20 and 30 vulnerabilities that leads to a complete disclosure. Mm. What about the safety and veracity of our data? Can we be safe and uh, sure that our data are not changed? Um, in most cases, yes, uh, there are like a single vulnerability of uh, complete integrity impact for JBoss AS and Glassfish, uh, but WebLogic and Web3 again are the leaders. That's pretty shameful. Uh, a very similar statistics for availability impact, again, WebSphere and WebLogic, the leaders, uh, here, Glassfish shows like three vulnerabilities that should lead to a total um, unfunctionality of uh, of a system. Uh, what about uh, um, vulnerability types by server? Unfortunately, uh, the experts from NVD database. Uh, don't have enough information uh, to properly assess uh, vulnerability type for most of uh, issues found. Uh, so for, especially for web logic, look at this huge gray area. It means that uh, IBM does not disclose information 
um, detailed information about security vulnerabilities. So we can't be sure uh, what uh, the severity of those vulnerabilities are, really are. So that's pretty shameful that they don't want to cooperate with uh, the client, right? Uh, uh, the same f uh, web logic, I mean, this was about web logic and Oracle, not IBM, I'm sorry. Uh, I was about to say that the same goes for Glassfish, probably it's because now the same vendor, right, Oracle. Uh, WebSphere and IBM are more, more helpful, m much more helpful than Oracle uh, in exposing the details of vulnerabilities. Uh, but still, uh, it's not, uh, uh, almost half of them uh, have unknown type. For JBoss AS, it might uh, look at first sight that the situation is very similar, but that's not the case. JBoss AS has very low number of security vulnerabilities in total. It's like six vulnerabilities. So uh, it's not statistically valid data, so you can have some uh, anomalies here. Uh, so what happens when we uh, remove those gray areas and compare only top uh, three vulnerabilities? Uh, it turns out that uh, the vulnerability types um, uh, have narrowed to only seven types. We have credential problems with credential management, with cross-site request forgery, path traversal, input validation, permissions, privileges, and access control, cross-site scripting, and information leak. Uh, also, we see that um, uh, path traversal, as well as cross-site scripting, uh, as, as well as uh, cross-site request forger are pretty unique because they are found only for two uh, web servers, I mean JBoss AS and Jetty. For most of servers, the most popular uh, vulnerability type is information leak. And then we have uh, cross-site scripting uh, and permission and privileges and access control. So basically, we have problems with controlling access to EOM data. Uh, what with, when we have uh, take a look at uh, three and more vulnerabilities of a given time for a server? Uh, it turns out that uh, WebSphere uh, presents a broad spectrum of various vulnerabilities found. Uh, on the other hand, JBoss AS uh, does not have uh, in any category more than uh, three vulnerabilities found. So that's pretty outstanding. Uh, JBoss uh, Enterprise Application Platform, which is much more complex product, uh, uh, shows uh, in total 12 vulnerabilities in two categories, like cross-site request forgery, which is uh, not that dangerous, and uh, information leak, which is uh, always a problem. Uh, on the other hand, Glassfish is pretty uh, solid uh, in terms of security vulnerabilities uh, disclosed. It was all about resource management. Uh, um, WebLogic and Tomcat has, have also, like WebSphere, quite broad spectrum of various vulnerabilities found. Uh, please take into account that uh, there is no injection attacks. They are not that popular. They are very, uh, on one hand, they are very dangerous. On the other hand, the web servers and app servers are pretty well protected against them. Um, uh, now, total vulnerabilities by type. So we see that with uh, 50 uh, over 50 vulnerabilities, uh, cross-site scripting is the winner. Uh, please uh, note that half of them goes to WebSphere. Then we have uh, permission, privileges, and access control. Again, half of them goes to WebSphere. WebSphere definitely um, 
makes our sparks our statistics and diagrams. Uh, then we have information leak, input validation and resource management. When we take a look at the other spectrum and of, of uh, the diagram, we see that we found only one SQL injection. It was in, uh, as far as I, I don't see here very well, but as far as I remember, it was, uh, it was Glassfish. Uh, we have also only one or two uh, race condition, link following and numeric errors. Uh, code injection, it was like for T and, and so. Uh, buffer errors are also not that popular in the Java technology, quite obvious, right? Uh, now let's take a look at one of the specification and scoring of the maximum score. It's from Glassfish Enterprise Server. Uh, and uh, what we see here is that the experts want to be on the safe side. If the vendor, do not, uh, the vendor does not disclose full information, they can't properly assess what's the impact and what's the uh, attack vector of uh, vulnerability, they assign the highest scores. So it might be that because of uh, uncooperative vendors, they have uh, higher scores assigned than the actual uh, severity of the vulnerability is. Uh, so uh, that's the problem of insufficient information. Uh, on the other uh, scale, there is some like very light vulnerability with the minimum score I found for containers. Uh, so it's like 1.2 score in CVSS metric. It was found in Apache and relates to, uh, to servlet context and uh, which allows uh, local web application to read or write files outside of the intended working directory. So uh, this vulnerability to be exploited needs a local access to to a machine. Uh, it's pretty uh, high complexity of uh, uh, exploiting it uh, and has only partial impact on uh, integrity. However, I'm not sure why they've assigned uh, only partial impact on integrity, why they write in the overview that they, uh, this way the application can read or write uh, any file. Uh, because for me it would mean also uh, like complete confidentiality impact. Uh, so uh, what I'm trying to say here is that uh, we can uh, take into account those scores, but we can't trust them blindly, right? Because uh, those are only people who uh, assess and assign those scores. So there might be some mistakes or insufficient information uh, in the database. On the other hand, all those vulnerabilities are confirmed. So those are little vulnerabilities, uh, though we can't be sure of their severities. Uh, what about web frameworks? Uh, I have selected only three uh, frameworks. So it turns out that the frameworks uh, have definitely a small number of uh, found and known vulnerabilities. Uh, the leader is Stratch2, which has like 14 uh, vulnerabilities found in total. Uh, the other, JBoss and Google Web Toolkit, have only few vulnerabilities found. On the other hand, I see that uh, security experts have some problems in assigning uh, uh, vulnerability to a piece of software. So, I mean, specific library uh, or a specific version. Uh, I found a few bugs that have uh, explicitly mentioned uh, specific version or library in the overview, but they, uh, there was no relation in uh, the database between specific product and, and that vulnerability. So it might lead to uh, 
a little bit misleading uh, um, results. On the other hand, I've used uh, like full text search and used for keywords, so it seems that uh, it should be uh, quite uh, uh, valuable statistics. So, Stretch2 is again a leader. I don't know why. Uh, Apache has some problems with uh, their projects. Uh, Apache Tomcat has uh, several design problems which uh, results in several significant vulnerabilities and the same goes for Stratch2. Uh, they have also uh, some uh, design problems like uh, uh, approach to uh, escaping li like OGNL, like uh, reflection, which uh, results in very uh, serious uh, uh, vulnerabilities. And I must admit that this year was extremely shameful for Stratch2 because uh, nine out of 14 uh, total bugs uh, have been discovered in 2012. So if so there were some people who used uh, Stratch2. Which version, may I ask? Which version do you use, guys? Uh, if that's a version before 2.3.4, uh, point 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 uh, you are in danger because uh, most of those uh, vulnerabilities uh, have been fixed only in the latest uh, revision, which is 2.3.4.1. Uh, here you have a quick list of uh, uh, found vulnerabilities. You see two of them uh, found this year. You see that two of them have uh, the assigned score 9.3, and this is not because of insufficient information. This is because of uh, real uh, severity of uh, those vulnerabilities. Um, uh, now we can take a look uh, where usually problems uh, lie when it comes to uh, web frameworks. Uh, as you can see, uh, one of the exploits uh, for one of vulnerabilities uh, uses um, OGNL combined with uh, character escaping. We have slash u, we have backslash u used for uh, hash. And this way, we can use OGNL and uh, um, get access to special OGNL variables and uh, uh, change it to whatever we want. So, uh, and so, uh, the exploit for this is pretty uh, simple. We just craft a special URL, and that's it. We can change, uh, for example, the variables in the user context. So we can, uh, for example, get authenticated in this way and get full access to the system. Or we can, uh, when we have full access, we can uh, tamper data uh, in any way we want, right? Um, another example about JBSIM. Uh, it uh, allows remote attackers to execute arbitrary code via a crafted URL. So again, uh, uh, this is very simple to exploit because we need to craft a special URL only. Um, and it's a, again about sanitization of input. So the category of this exploit is input validation. Uh, the actual exploit might look like this. It's a combination of uh, reflection and escaping again. So this is the, uh, usually this is the biggest problem and shady areas of all web frameworks. Uh, now um, we'll switch uh, to, to the part in which I hope we highlight some things about assessing the security level of a library. 
according to me, the most important uh, point to look at while assessing uh, security level of library is vulnerabilities and trends. Trends are very important because they uh, show the attitude of uh, author to fixing uh, issues as well as uh, working on uh, quality assurance, right? Uh, we should take a deep look at complexity of the software itself. It seems that the more, the more complex software is, the more vulnerable is as well. And also the culture. Um, I mentioned culture and attitude of the authors uh, in trends, but the culture and the attitude uh, uh, of software development team is very important in uh, assessing and uh, security library, especially for the future security of library. Uh, what about uh, complexity? Do you know KISS paradigm, KISS principle? If you know it, say it. Simple. Exactly. Keep it simple, stupid. Uh, so, um, the KISS principle states that most systems work best if they are kept simple rather than made complex, right? Pretty obvious. Uh, therefore, simplicity should be a key goal. Uh, also, uh, not only for library developers, but in our daily work as well. So it's more like uh, don't use overly complex tool for a very simple uh, functionality. Instead, build complex functionality out of uh, simple tools. So it applies to object-oriented programming as well as to uh, system infrastructure and uh, uh, dependency uh, management in our libraries. Uh, culture. Culture is the best indicator of libraries' future security, as uh, CEO of Aspect Security stated. I agree with him. Um, we sh so basically, we should look for known security vulnerabilities, library complexity, and how the company behind a piece of software uh, manages security during development life cycle as well as security during issue handling. Uh, we have a number of good sources of uh, security information, like uh, before mentioned security uh, databases. Uh, we uh, should take a look at vendor sites, to assess development process, how transparent it is, and how secure it is. Uh, issue tracker, security bulletins, release notes, and so on. This is uh, still the thing uh, on which open source software uh, needs to work more and more, because uh, release notes usually do not uh, include information about security issues. Uh, it's very difficult to find security bulletins, and so on. Uh, so, to conclude, in the Java world, we have a very rich ecosystem. Uh, and we can choose from it whatever we want. But we can, we can find very friendly libraries, we can find very dumb ones or dangerous ones. The choice is yours. Thank you.